Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Sports View. I'm Ron Cameron. It's not just another edition because I'm back for the first time. Yeah, in, uh, another first... edition of Sports View. <laughs> first time in the last uh, about month or another so. Another stinkeroo. And uh, it's been the most restful vacation of my life. Can you imagine, ladies and gentlemen, putting up with this clown for almost five years? Well, it has been five years in the canal. It has been program. five years. do our years, anniversary so show let soon. Let me tell you something. And to get away from you was just one of the most wonderful things that's happened something. to me in you a long time. You ought to kiss the ground that I even invite you on the show right. to begin with. <laughs> invite me I to saved your now. career. What yeah. was left of it. So now he goes to Madison Square Garden. He shows for the Yankees. That's where we're going to talk some baseball when you're done there. Right. I want to talk about the sponsors, though, because they have hung with the show. And believe me, the minute I'm off this show, we get threats of cancellation from sponsors, threats of cancellation from the affiliates. So we appreciate them hanging on, despite the fact that this guy's been here by himself, unfortunately, part of the time. Wait, Al Dietrich, Bob Page picking the Yankees. We're Al Dietrich, we'll talk about Oldsmobile, that GMC Truck, and Uncle Al wants to remind everybody that they have special rebate offers and special financing rates out there on M59 and Pontiac Waterford. And while you're on the way out, stop by the Top Hat Hamburger Restaurant, the new one at M59 and Telegraph to go with their other locations here in Detroit. We also have The Sting, uh, one of Detroit's hottest night spots with old friends Ashley Thomas and John Rouser and the old Playboy Club at uh, the Lodge Freeway Greenfield. We have Binary Computers, Woodward at 12 Mile. We have Pass, the Pro-Am Sports Systems. Fred Wetzel and the folks at T-Com Pager. We have a new sponsor of yours. Amatea Restaurant, great place uh, for all Italian and American cuisine and nice atmosphere with liquor. So Bob Page will be there on the corner of West Warren and Vinoy. In Garden City. And I thought there was another sponsor, but uh, yeah. I guess not. Let me introduce the guest. No. Oh, that's right, of course. How could, pages. I, how could I We're forget? We're adding eight pages in the next couple issues, going real strong, and we'd like to have you as a subscriber dial this number for Sports Fans Journal to subscribe 24 hours a day, 751 one eight. I love this comment. Look at this comment. It's just, it ran in the cover. It says, Can Michigan blunt criticism? And then right underneath that, columns by Bill Frieder and Don Canham. Boy, you don't think that's going to be too much of a prejudicial viewpoint. What, are you out there shilling for Michigan no. now in if this you thing? Read my, did you read my column? I quite never I said What do you think I read your, you know what I use your column for when I run out of, I shouldn't say that. Yeah. I was going to say something in the bathroom. Well, I, 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 I said Michigan was overrated <laughs> this year. What did Frieder and Canham say? Can they blunt the criticism? They said they could. I'm sure they said they could. Sure they said they could. Uh, we're going to talk, by the way, uh, with Ricky Birdsong, the UAD coach today. Uh, and he should have some interesting things to say about the NCAA tournament, as well as his program at the NCAA tournament. Michigan going up against Xavier. Some of you see this program. Uh, perhaps that game is already in the... Uh, Michigan would have yeah. beaten Xavier. I, I, you know, I think we all think Michigan's going to win the game, but Michigan could struggle against them the way they've played in NCAA tournaments. And we'll also talk about Arizona. He was an assistant for many sure years to Lou Olson. And, now uh, we're going to get that. to you and your pick in the American League. We, did, we, we didn't start. talk about baseball from the last show. We went through everything else. Dantley and Aguirre and Probert and the whole right. deal. So let's make... I want to get to Ricky's. So let's make some Comments we're going to talk, talk about the American League East. We're going to talk for a minute. I'm going to pick the Tigers to win the American League East, and here is why. You stopped several at the reasons. bar this morning for no. a quick belt of scotch. That's Se why you're picking the Tigers. Several reasons I'm going to pick the Tigers. I think they're a much better team than they were a year ago, and they within one game of first place a year why? ago. Why? Because they got I, Chris Brown with a pulled jockstrap muscle out of the lineup every other day at third. I think, and Keith Moreland, who's 42 years old now. Number one, he's not 42. He's 40. Anyway, I think that. Whitaker, you're going to see Whitaker have a heck of a year. He's been floating for years, and I think his last year of his contract. Wonder why. <laughs> last year of his contract. Yeah. You, that's why they're going to win it. And I think even Jack Morris, a big mouth, the, uh, the underachiever last year who made all the money didn't, did, and went in the tank, went in the clutch. I think Jack Morris is going to uh, bounce back and have a pretty good season for him. I, and, oh, shut up a minute. Jeff Robinson's going to be here the last couple months of the season. They'd have won it if he'd have been there last year. I see the Tigers. I like the trick. I see the Tigers. Chris Brown's going to have a good year. I see the Tigers as being a team in decline. Now, if, okay. if, they, if they do make a season out of this in the American League East, it'll just, because, it'll just be because that division's weaker now. I, I will say this about contracts. And, yeah, I mean, you say you kid me about picking the Yankees. Uh, you are, okay, fine, I'm going to pick the Yankees, but big deal. Ernie Witt was here on this program, what, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, and just about convinced me to pick the Blue Jays. A lot of teams can win that division. Well, yeah, it's not yeah, very good. Yeah, but no, I think it's a good division, not a great division. I don't yeah. think there's any great teams besides the Mets in baseball. But I will say this to you. I think that uh, when, when you talk about the Tigers and you talk about the Yankees, you're talking about a ball club that has two players signed, the Tigers, that is, beyond next year's Chet Lemon and Alan Trammell. I wholeheartedly agree with giving the money to Alan Trammell. That's one of the few players in sports that deserve more and than a one-year contract. look at the way this kid, you know, when Tram signed that seven-year contract, Tram signed that seven-year contract, I went to him and said, you know, that, that really wasn't a bright decision. You went in there without an agent. You signed your life away. He said, I wanted to stay in Detroit. I said, did you get a no-trade guarantee? Well, no, the Tigers wouldn't give any no-trade guarantees. So what would you sign it for? That contract is going to be outmoded in three years. You'll be hopelessly behind in the pay scale. 
This guy just played his rear end off the See length that? of that contract. He Unlike never said a, he never said a word. He never said a word about being grossly underpaid, which he was by baseball standards. It's his own standards. fault. He signed and the And he knew that. And that's what he said. I signed the deal. But then when it came time to get the new contract, he went in and it took him five minutes. Right. The Tigers said, you know, what do you think you're worth? Tram says, well, I looked at some of the figures in the Players Association. I should probably be making this much money. And the Tigers said, yeah. And then did you see what he said afterwards? How do you ever spend this kind of money anyway? And here we got a case in New York. Of a, a lot kid, of athletes are spending it right up got, the nose. We got a case in New York of a kid, spending, a kid making $1.4 million this year and guaranteed $1.8 million next year. He signed his own contract, and I'm talking about Daryl Strawberry. What a beauty he is. And Strawberry walks out of camp after coming to blows with Keith Hernandez. Hernandez and Gary Carter were trying to tell him, look, Straw, you're getting some bad advice from your agent. What happened? Strawberry changed agents. The new agent doesn't get a dime of his $1.4 million until he gets Strawberry something, right? So, hey, Daryl, hey, let's walk. Let's walk. You know, he's not going to give me money until stra till he gets Strawberry some, uh, some money. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing was handled so poorly, and you see this kind of stuff happen all the time in sports. Yes, Daryl Strawberry is underpaid by baseball standards. He's the sixth highest player, paid player on the Mets, and that's not right. But he signed the contract of his own volition. That's right. Ricky Henderson now, I see. Ricky Henderson well, beginning, Yankees, Bob. beginning negotiations with the Yankees this week, at, which may have already blown up by now, and demanding... Three million dollars a year, and you talk about drugs and sports. Well, Bob, hold his, on, you're a his whoa, agent. Hold on a minute, his Bob. agent says this is a quote from Ricky Henderson's agent. He is one of the top three everyday players in the every game. Day? Stress every day, please. Ricky Henderson's out of the lineup every other day with some mysterious see, injury. Whoa, hold on, but you're forgetting something. Ricky Henderson's demanding three million dollars a year, folks, guaranteed. And if he plays every day, there's another million on top of that. Well, it's just With $3 million well, a year, you, know, you should be able to play every day. I don't know, man. It's, He's it's, a dog. Really, He's been a dog his whole well, career. Ricky Henderson is the greatest leadoff hitter who's in ever baseball lived. history. In baseball However, history. How can you can lead I'm, off from what? I'm not going to say the man's. I'm not going to say the man's a dog because he's got too much talent. That's still a dog. But you talent wonder, you being wonder a dog. about some of the injuries. His teammates wonder about some of the injuries. The media wonders about the injuries. And don't you want to come back and prove yourself in 1989 and play every day and have a great season before you pop off he about three million less. a year? Now he anyway. says about the Yankees being. Being drinkers and that cost him, cost him last year's pennant. And he's, if there's and he's, a problem with that, he drinks more than they do. That's not true. But if there's a problem, you know that? If there's a problem you know with that, because I talk to guys who cover the Yankees on an everyday basis, like Michael Kay of the New York Daily News and people like that. If there's a problem with that, what you do is you go to club officials and you say, "I think there was some difficulty with drinking. We got it." You don't go to the media. And tell the writers, you don't think they had a field day with that you, in New York? You don't. You, did, Unbelievable. You, if you all of a sudden tried to say that uh, Ricky Henderson is a brain surgeon? All right, let's get to Ricky Bird's song. But we have to, we, you know what we forgot to do last show? We forgot to bestow our John Bagley Award winner of the week. Remember, remember the Bagley Award? It was started earlier this year when the New Jersey Nets, awful team that they are, are trailing the ball game by three, five Bagley, seconds left. Bagley comes up court. Goes Definitely in. steps right past the three-point line, pulls up, and hits the two-pointer at the buzzer, and they lose by one, and I felt so sorry for Ben Braun. I read that that's yes, how Eastern Michigan lost that. Did you see that? Yeah. That's how Eastern Michigan lost yeah. in the MAC tournament. They're down by three, I guess, to Ball State. Kid's wide open for the three-pointer, fakes it, drives around his man, and lays it beautifully off the <laughs> backboard for two as time expires. Our John Bagley Award of the Week. Ricky Birdsong from the UAD is here. we got a lot of college basketball to talk about, and we'll do that by right after Continue this. making a fool out of you, too. about to embark on a great crusade. The eyes of the world are upon us. Our mission, crush the enemy before they crush us. Like America, Uncle Al will come through for you, crushing prices on Oldsmobiles and GMC trucks. Say hello, America. Sayonara, imports. Tanks, but no tanks to imports. Visit Uncle Al's giant new dealership on M59 just east of the Pontiac Airport. Where the runway ends, the deals begin. If you're a sports fan, you should subscribe to this magazine, Sports Fans Journal, and here's how. Our monthly columnists include Ernie Harwell, George Kell, Dick Vitale, Denny McLean, George Allen, Bob Feller, Jimmy Carson, George Blaha, Bill Gadsby, and a whole lot more. 
Sports Fans Journal is available at newsstands and bookstores. To subscribe, call our 24-hour hotline at 751-1818. Sports Fans Journal, a must for sports fans living anywhere in Michigan or the U.S. Call now, 751-1818. Hey, where's the meat? It's right here at Cattleman's Meat Center where you can buy fresh, lean, top quality beef, pork, veal, poultry, even fish. Packing house style, save up to 40%, quality guaranteed. Where's the meat? Come inside our 3,500 square foot cooler for everyday low prices like... This week, packing house style standing ribs, cut your way free. Cattleman's Meat Center, Eastern Market Area, and Hamtramck. No limit, save up to 40%. You said it, honey. We're back on Sports U with University of Detroit basketball coach Ricky Birdsong. Just concluded his first season. And he doesn't look too bad. You think? I thought he'd come in on crutches with bandages from the beating that he took and everything. He looks still, pretty good. Despite the one loss record, you're still smiling. But uh, I like the fact that you drew more people this year. It seems like it's about time the people got off their tail at University of Detroit and promoted the product a little. And they finally did it a little this year. I agree with you, Ron. We, uh, we were very pleased with the job that the athletic administration did in terms of promoting our program. And then our kids went out and played hard, and I think that's all people want to see is that if the kids will go out and play hard, I think the people in Detroit will support them. Uh, the coaches in Detroit supporting you, because that, of course, is what everybody's been talking about. The PSL wasn't going to send any kids to UAD in protest of you being hired. Right. Uh, they've been very fair to us. Uh, we haven't gotten any of their players yet. We still don't have a Detroit kid on our roster. And I think being the University of Detroit, that's really a uh, frightening thought. It's an amazing we, statistic. Yeah. Nobody, from the nobody from the University of Detroit hails from the city of Detroit. It's a horse manure statistic. Too. It's unbelievable. It's, it really is. So, so we haven't broken that uh, uh, barrier yet, but I think we will this spring. But it hadn't been because they haven't been uh, uh, very good to us and very kind to us and, and open to our program. Are you going to sign a big-time player from the city of Detroit? We think we are. Definitely. Uh, not this year. Not this big year time because the big time year. players usually go in the uh, fall early signing. Right. Okay, now did, did you see yourself in the next couple of years? One thing that's been lacking at University of Detroit for a long time is a pure center. Right, and that's, that's a tough call at it our level. You know, call. at the level where we're, that we're competing right now, uh, you know, there's only about seven or eight of those guys around, and it seems like Georgetown gets one. Sure. And, well, Georgetown, Georgetown gets, gets two. two. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody else gets one. That's at that right. Level. North Carolina gets one, <laughs> Syracuse gets one, and then, then the rest of us play like, uh, you know, play in, inside with six, seven, six, eight guys. And I think that's all you need. When you look at Illinois, uh, they're proving it can get done with good quickness. Uh, if the guys are six, of course, they're athletes too. Oh, they're Besides good players. Besides, quick, they can right. run, they can play. They can well, you've play. got a six ten kid in your program right now, don't you? Started some at center for you last year, Stacy Johnson. Sure. And uh, you know, Stacy was a defensive specialist for us. He had a long ways to go offensively, and that, I think bit that's of a brick layer than you, Jay. I would say so. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, he made a lot of progress. You know, he uh, he fouled out of most every ball game a year ago, and I don't think he fouled out of uh, one ball game for us this year. Ricky, you were down here last summer, right after you got the job, uh, just as a get acquainted kind of show, um, and of course you were optimistic. If you can't be optimistic, then when are you going to be? Now that you've had a year to coach at UAD, to become acclimated to the town, being lost in the major media market, maybe the antipathy of the PSL coaches, are you still optimistic? I really am, uh, because you know, when you look, when you get around Detroit and you see all the people that are still excited about uh, basketball at Detroit, mainly it's because of the job that Dick Vitale did, you know, that, that people tasted that success and they want it back so, so much that uh, they're, they're behind us, they're pulling for us. You'd be surprised all the people we run into that can't wait to see us get it done again. I made the statement before, if the only way to University of Detroit to be successful, they'd have to move to the suburbs, or they'd have to get out of the, where they are right now. I don't think that's uh, that's necessarily so. Now we're looking at, uh, and I'm, I may be speaking a little bit soon, but we're, we've talked about it. If you might recall, we took a couple of games downtown Kobo. to Kobo. Well, we're looking at the possibility of at least taking more games downtown to Kobo. I don't think we're ever going to see the day where the University of Detroit moves out of the city of Detroit. And uh, I'm not sure that it's necessary. Uh, I'm, certainly that's one of our stumbling blocks, but it's one that can be overcome. How did you do it, Kobo? We were one and one, and we had our best attendance uh, uh, marks at Cobo Arena, with the mm -hmm. exception of the Michigan State game. You almost doubled your attendance this year, didn't you? We really did, and uh, we were uh, really encouraged. When you look at the record and the number of people that came out and supported us despite the record, it lets you know that there's a lot of ground we can make up with just the average team. At what point do you think the University of Detroit can contend in that, in the, in that conference in the first place? We, we really think, Ron, that if we can get the kind of recruits that, we, that we're after this, this spring, that we're going to make a, a real giant leap uh, forward in that conference even next year. Even really next believe, year? I but really you said that. you're not going to, 
most of the big time players, you're not going to get this year. Not the big time centers, but we, we, we're on some kids that are like the kids that, that are playing at Illinois. Now, they won't come in and make the immediate impact, but they'll give us a start to work toward. Yeah, Ricky, the if they're like they were at Illinois, they wouldn't come in and make an immediate <laughs> impact. Not well, yeah. quite, in other words. <laughs> not quite that good, but, uh -huh. but they're, though, they're that kind of a product for us. Mm -hmm. And you remain upbeat then. I mean, I thought you'd come in here and say, man, I'm ready to leave town, uh, you know. I, Definitely. I, I'm upbeat. At first, when I, when I first looked at it, I wouldn't have said that I'd have been happy with seven wins. But I, as we got going in the season, I, I realized that one win would have been uh, exciting because we, we just really, we didn't have it. And when you look at what we lost, uh, Archie tell us 29 points out of, a, out of the scoring uh, on a team that only won seven games a year ago. You take that much out of it. And then, but you had some pretty good uh, individuals. See, Bill Wood had a nice year Bill for Wood you. Bill Wood had a great a year. Nobody year was counting on Bill. No, and, nobody uh, was counting nobody on him. McKinney's doing all right. Right, McKinney did a great job. Uh, we got uh, Calvin Winfield as yeah, a freshman. Yeah, Calvin Winfield, yeah. yeah. Came on right. and had a good year for us. And so but eventually, Ricky, if you're going to become big time, as the program was under Dick Vitale, right. as you wanna, you're going to have to get the Derek Coleman's to stay home, people like that. And I just question whether or not you can do that at UAD. I think we can do it once we uh, start winning, Bob. I think I think uh, we came very close this year to, to getting some kids that went on to Big Ten schools. Mm -hmm. Michael Talley, for instance. Michael Talley was a kid that, that we were on, and Michael really liked our program. But, you know, I think the lure of the Big Ten at that, yeah. at that time, particularly where our program was, not being sure of what we were all about. Uh, Tony Tolbert, we were, we were very close on Tony Tolbert, but the real close prize for us would have been Dwayne Stevens. He went to Michigan State. And I think Dwayne was the best prospect in the state of Michigan. Right? I think Michigan State got the well, best Well, he's from player. Ferndale, of course, but the other kids are from Detroit. Right. And, you, and you don't think that guys like Ben Kelso or Eddie Rachel at the Porus said to those kids, look, UAD's not a good situation. They brought in this guy from out of state. I mean, just you know, don't go there. I really don't think so. Uh, I think they probably said, let's, let's wait to see what kind of program they're mm -hmm. actually going to have. Hmm. Well, I'm sure the folks want to know what you think about your former team, Arizona and the team Ron Cameron is foolishly picking to win it all this year, Syracuse, and a lot more to come with the NCAA tournament with Ricky Birdsong right after this. I'm sorry, she's out of the office for the day and there's no way to contact her. With a pager from TCOM, you could contact her anytime. I know it's an emergency, but it's out of the building now. May I call you later? With Motorola pagers from TCOM, you can deal with emergencies now. I'm sorry, our delivery man is on call right now. We won't be able to help you till tomorrow. Hi, my name is Fred Wetzel with TCOM Paging. If these problems seem familiar to you, then you need a TCOM pager. You'd be surprised how affordable they are. Probably wonder how you've done without one. Give us a call at 559-6826. Binary Computers is celebrating their ninth anniversary and how they've become one of Detroit's top independent computer dealers is really simple. A great selection of brand name computer products, outstanding service, and highly knowledgeable trained consultants who make things understandable in plain English. Binary now has facsimile machines and telephone systems, so stop in for special anniversary savings at Binary Computers, Metro Detroit's business computer center, Woodward at 12 Mile, Berkeley. Remember, if you haven't got a computer, you'd better get one before your competitor does. It's time to eat and I'm so hungry now My stomach's turning upside down Day or night when I want a bite I want the best little burger in town French fries, onion chips, creamy chocolate shakes Baby, they're so hard to refuse For dinner or lunch, there's a lot too much And for breakfast you just can't lose Try the most exquisite, authentic, delicious Italian food ever. The Amantea has a complete variety of Italian and American cuisine. Homemade lasagna, mastacholi, spaghetti, and veal parmesan. Fantastic American favorites, too, such as steak, ribs, chops, poultry, and seafood. After dinner, have a refreshing drink and an Italian dessert. And Amantea is only the freshest ingredients are used in all their entrees, homemade soups, pastas, and sauces. So experience the best in Italian and American cuisine at a very reasonable price. Amantea, a place you can be proud to bring your friends, family, and business associates we're back on sports view with sports view Spit with it out, Ronnie. ricky birdsong university of detroit basketball coach before we go into my pick of syracuse and your pick of georgetown xavier is a team in the conference and overall your views of the conference and then i want to ask you what do you think xavier can beat michigan 
Right. I think uh, I think the conference was a good conference. I think this year you had four teams that were above uh, that separated the conference. I thought I thought uh, Evansville, St. Louis, Xavier, and when Dayton was playing well, I think I think their team really was better than the uh, than the other four teams, uh, the other three teams, namely ourselves, Loyola, and uh, Butler. I think we were all struggling just to kind of keep our heads above water, but the other teams were very good. And uh, I think uh, Xavier going against Michigan, I think it'll be a good game. Uh, depending on which Michigan team shows up, I think Xavier's capable of beating Michigan, but I think it's very doubtful that it'll happen. But, mm -hmm. but if, this, if the Michigan team shows up, they showed up against Illinois, Xavier has enough and, talent. And Xavier, some people, now, some people are saying this after the game. Yeah, okay, well, that, that. but what I want to say, Xavier is noted as a quick team. The team that can, if you let them, if you, if you go flat against them. Right, they can, they can all of a sudden score 10 points on you before you can bat an eye. And, uh, you know, they'll press Michigan the entire game. At least that's the way they've played all year. And I think uh, Michigan has problems with teams like that. Yeah, and, and uh, it'll, be, it'll be a good game, but I think Michigan probably will uh, prevail. Okay, now Alabama, Alab uh, South Alabama, and uh, the winner of that, which obviously will be Alabama in your mind. I in my mind, it'll be Alabama. They say South, as Vitale says, South Alabama is one of his real sleeper teams, so I don't know. But the main thing, he's only interested in the West. His boys, Arizona. <laughs> Hold on a minute. We're leading to that. We'll get Lead there quickly. Then, damn it! Just People are getting I beg impatient your out there. You can't say that on television. What you I just said? Did go ahead. Well, not for you. <laughs> Ever since Clark Gable said it in the movies, Ronnie. Was <laughs> You're right. no Clark right. Gable, fella. <laughs> to say the least. Uh, okay, the Michigan uh, going any further and ultimately playing a North Carolina, of course. I think right? Michigan will get to the North Carolina game. So do I. I think they'll squeak by Alabama. It'll be a close game, one, two, three point game. I think they're going to squeak by North Carolina, unlike the last two times they played in the tournament. I, and North I think Carolina North Carolina Bears. will win that game. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think they're playing well right now. Yeah, and, they uh, got a tough front line. Jay all right, Reed, let's get, get at the root of the situation here. If you feel that way, and you're probably going to be right, people mm -hmm. once again will say, look at Vice. Tell. You can just hear Vitale now casually, look at that talent that Michigan has and they can't win. <laughs> and they're going to say because of, not that talent. And because of Coach Frieder. Bill Frieder overrated as a coach? No, I, I think there's the so problem? much pressure. Well, I think there's, there's so much pressure on coaches like Bill Frieder. You know, what Bill has done is just built a program to the point that now people expect a lot. Uh, Are they overrated? Uh, I thought they were overrated. Their talent? Yeah, I don't think they're, I, they don't have a true point guard. Ramil Robinson's a great player, but he's not a true point guard. Right. And they're having some problems with the injuries after that? Too. Well, I, you know, I, I think they, you know, maybe they're overrated. I think their uh, preseason schedule hurt them, not from the standpoint that they play uh, weak teams and don't get prepared, but I think it builds false expectations. I think when you look at Michigan, average uh, wins of 35 points and 40 point blowouts I think people all of a sudden early start thinking boy this is the greatest team ever hit the floor yeah but it's every year though but look at the problems they have in the NCAA every year you can't deny that they lose to frequently inferior teams in that tournament and people say it's because of Frieder I think I think the kids are not sometimes ready to play I look at the Illinois game and I, and I felt that uh, obviously Michigan is good enough to beat Illinois and I think if you bring Illinois back in there they would admit that hey you know we wouldn't want to take our chances yeah. in Christ Arena to do that every night. I think that the Michigan's problems are if their kids will come ready to play every night, I think they're, they're not overrated. They it's, have enough talent. You say not play. overrated, but of course, Glenn Rice, we all know he's a great player. I think Terry Mills, for the most part, has been a disappointment. Right, he needs to come to play, though. I don't think it's because he lacks talent. I agree. I think that he needs to come to play. He's a little heavy. I think mm -hmm. he's got to lose some weight, although he has lost some this season. Is, he, is Terry Mills that good? He can be uh, very, very good. Yeah, he, I think he's. Uh, Who do you blame for his you, uh, downfall? You, Ricky, you you might have taken him at Arizona, right? Oh, when you were yeah. an assistant out there, to oh, say the no least. Question, say, say the least. least. I don't think yeah. any program in America would have turned the key. That's right. Out. All right, now you were you were at Arizona, so we all know who you want to see win the NCAA tournament. Exactly. Who will win the NCAA? I, I think Georgetown will win it, Dude. and uh, you know I've been watching them now for the last two or three weeks. I, I've not missed one of their games, and I've not seen a team that's, that's that plays with as much aggressiveness that uh, where the kids seem like they're just on a mission, uh, the Smith, the point hungry. guard, they're yeah. hungry. Uh, Alonzo Mourning's playing like a senior. Matumbu, uh, whatever they the call Kimbe Matumbo. Right, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he's helping be so much. Player too, yeah. I look at Syracuse, I think Sherman Douglas is a great player. I think that he's has a flair for the dramatics, which is that's what you got in the NCAA. I think Derek Coleman's a great player. I think they've got enough of a supporting cast. It's been an inconsistent year for him. They started off by losing, what, six of the first seven games in the, in the conference. Right. And they've not played that great lately. Not I today. think they're it wasn't a diamond that in the rough. Yeah. I think it was six out of eight, something like that. Anyway, I think they're a diamond in the rough. Syracuse chances. 
I think uh, Syracuse will have uh, will have some good games in the NCAA uh, tournament, but I think their biggest problem is that when people, if people zone them, I think they're going to have to prove that they can shoot the outside shot. You got Stevie Thompson that likes to drive everything to the right. bucket. Sherman Douglas, much the same the nice way. Game the Sherman night, Douglas Thompson. can shoot. He Sherman can shoot Douglas it. and Matt Rowe, of course. And Matt Rowe can, can shoot. shoot. If Matt is really yeah. on and he's hitting his three pointers, they're going to be they're going to be tough. We also. want to get a couple final comments about the UOD program for you, but we'd be remiss if we didn't ask you about the guy some people say is the number one college player in the country. You personally recruited Sean Elliott to Arizona. Tell us quickly, will he be the number one player taken in the lottery, and what kind of kid is he? He's a uh, he's a great great kid. I I don't think there's a better kid around. You know, they're, they're, you can be as good, but you can't be a better kid than Sean Elliott. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I think he'll be one or two. You know, I've talked with some people. Uh, some people even say you know he could he could be the third guy picked. Um, and I'm trying to think some of the but guys. But he'll be a big success in the NBA. Oh, he'll be a big NBA. success. He'll no be question in your mind about that. Some team's first guy, and, okay. and uh, they'll try to build a franchise around him. And we'll close it out with U of E basketball coach Ricky Birdsong after this final timeout. The Pistons are slamming and jamming their way through the NBA's toughest opposition this winter on pass. Follow all the hot hoops as Detroit's bad boys drive their way toward their second straight Central Division Championship under the direction of Chuck Daly. The Pistons road down the second half of the season promises to be filled with some new twists and turns. Stay tuned as some of the season's best contests are yet to come. The excitement of Piston basketball here on Pass Sports, Michigan's cable network of champions. That was me, John Rouser, not too many years ago as a defensive back with the Pittsburgh Steelers after my playing career at the University of Michigan had ended. Now I'm proud to be co-owner of the Sting, Detroit's most dynamic nightclub. We've got continuous live DJs, continuous videos, and live entertainment every weekend. But you don't have to disco. The Sting is also a great after work place to meet other professional people who frequent our lounge. So stop in and see us at the Sting. We're in the old Playboy Club, the largest greenfield, with plenty of lighted, secured parking. May I help you? Yeah! I want some good for yeah. my heart. Your heart? Yeah! And keep it light and lean for a healthy heart. What do you know what I mean? How about pasta with fruit? That's great for a healthy heart. Eating the right foods can help keep your heart healthy. The American Heart Association, we're fighting for your life. If you're a sports fan, you should subscribe to this magazine, Sports Fans Journal, and here's how. Our monthly columnists include Ernie Harwell, George Kell, Dick Vitale, Denny McLean, George Allen, Bob Feller, Jimmy Carson, George Blaha, Bill Gadsby, and a whole lot more. Sports Fans Journal is available at newsstands and bookstores. To subscribe, call our 24-hour hotline at 751-1818. Sports Fans Journal, a must for sports fans living anywhere in Michigan or the U.S. Call now, 751-1818. Closing it out with Otis Birdsong, not Otis Birdsong. Ricky Otis Birdsong? That. He's in CBA now. Ricky Birdsong, University <laughs> You knew he'd say that. Right. Coach. Yeah. And he played Michigan State this year, and you almost beat him. That was nice right. there. Uh, when are we going to see a Michigan State uh, and the Michigan game U of D every season? Well, we uh, we like to play Michigan. I don't think we have a problem with uh, with playing. Is Michigan, it a two for one? They want the two or there. Well, they one. even go more than that. Three they for want one. like three for one. Yeah. We uh, we we don't feel like we can afford to do that. Uh, I think they're rolling the credits, which means we're out of time, Ricky. Okay. Good luck to you. Another I won't say congratulations on a fine season, but congratulations for surviving this exactly. first year. Get the sponsors quick. Sponsors: Hurry. Al Dietrich, Cattlemen's Meat Center, Sports Fans Journal, The Sting, Binary Computers, Hop Hat Hamburgers, <laughs> Pass, Tcom Pager, and Amatea Restaurant. That means we're bye bye. Sports fans, Journal too. Bye bye. Do you say sports fans?